for Israel is that you might be saved. So the number one goal for God is that all should be saved, including the Jews. And in verse 9 we read, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, what does it say? You shall be saved. It doesn't say you have to speak in tongues. It doesn't say you have to do great miracles. It doesn't say that you have to have the gift of prophecy. It doesn't say that you have to do all these wonderful things. All it says is that you have to declare with your mouth the name of Jesus and believe it in your heart and believe that he was raised from the dead and that is enough to bring salvation to you. Now, some of us can't believe that because we can't believe that it's that easy. We feel like we have to do more. But let me tell you something. There's power in the name of Jesus. This morning with the youth, we talked about names and why the name is so significant. Do you believe that by a simple declaration, it can change your life? Let me give you an illustration. If you were in a court of law, and you're standing before the judge, and he says, do you declare yourself innocent or guilty? You better be careful, because the first thing that comes out of your mouth will determine your fate. Your declaration of innocence will send you down a pathway. If you declare it guilty, it will send you down a different pathway. Jesus says, if you declare my name and you believe it in your heart that he existed and that he was raised from the dead, that is enough to bring salvation. Now, we as a church always like to put conditions on that. Yes, you can have that, but make sure you dress nicely. Is that what it says? No. Yes, we can do that, but let's make sure we give enough tithe and offering. Does it say that? No. Yeah, maybe we can have that, but we have to have a nice church. We're doing a building fund here. I can't wait till this is built. We need a facility that can fit more people here. But is this building really salvation for us? No. We need a place, especially here in Arizona, that has air conditioning. All right? It's very important. But remember, your salvation is in the name of Jesus. Okay, let's continue reading. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, or the Gentile. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. You know what this says? The saying that it doesn't matter if you're a Seventh-day Adventist, it doesn't matter if you're a Baptist, or a Catholic, or a Mormon, or a Jew, if you're a Filipino, if you're, if you're black, you're white, if you're an Indian. In God's eyes, you all look the same. You're all the same. That means that the same requirement is true of the Muslim, the Jew, and the Christian. Well, only one pathway to salvation, and that is declaring that Jesus is Lord and that he rose from the dead and believing it in your heart. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. Shall be saved. How many of you here are ready to call upon the name of the Lord and believe it? Now normally, if we were doing an evangelistic crusade, I would have people do this and call, come up, but I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to have you do that quietly in your heart because this is between you and God. And I want to close today with this message that being saved is not that hard. You actually have to work harder to be lost. Do you know that if you are lost, you actually have to work at it? Because Jesus worked already on your behalf to be saved. He already died on the cross for you. All you have to do is declare it and believe it in your heart and call on the name of the Lord. That's all you need to do to be saved. And that's the first step that you need to start your journey. If that is something that you want to do, then in your heart right now, I want you to believe that Jesus exists, that he was saved, 
uh, that he saved you and that he was resurrected. And right now, in one full declaration, I want to hear everyone say, the name of Jesus, the Lord Savior. Is Jesus your Lord? Amen. 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 Now, we're going to close off with Mark chapter 1, verse 15. Let's look at that. Everyone who calls on the, on the Lord's name will be saved. And today, I heard everyone declare the Lord's name. Does that mean that you are saved? Yes. Yes. Okay, let's take a look at this. We're going to close with this one here. Mark chapter 1, verse 15. Now, those of you who have your scriptures, because remember, I couldn't do my presentation because I got stung by a scorpion. Um, but if you have your scriptures, you have your Bibles open, you notice that Mark chapter 1, verse 15, something unusual is with that verse. Can you all tell me, for those of you who have it, what color is the word? Red. What does red mean? Yes. It means Jesus said it. Now, if you want to throw away the Bible and you want to eliminate it, that's fine with me, but make sure you don't get rid of two things. Make sure you don't get rid of the Ten Commandments because God wrote it with his own finger in stone. And make sure you don't get rid of anything in red because Jesus, the Son of God, spoke it. So if you want to know what Jesus' word to you is, it's in the red. Now, look at what he says here. Mark chapter 1, verse 15. And he said, the time is what? Is come, is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is, is near. What do we need to do knowing that the kingdom of God is near? Repent and believe the good news, the gospel. Now, I want to close with this concept of repentance. Because a lot of preachers today don't like to talk about repentance because it's a nasty word. It makes people feel uncomfortable. If I ask you to repent, it makes you feel like you're under the judgment. But I want to have you understand repentance, people. Brothers and sisters, repentance is simply changing your mind about who God is. Repentance is feeling so bad that we hurt God, that we're sorry for that. And that we acknowledge that Jesus has given his life for us. And because we're so happy for that sacrifice that Jesus gave, then I'm going to say in my heart, this is not a God who wants to judge me. This is a God who loves me. This is a God who gave all for me. And at that moment, when you see God in a different light, you have repented. Repentance is not fear of a judgment. Repentance is following God because he loves you and because you love him, because of what he's done for you. Repentance is changing your mind about who God is. God is not a God who wants to keep you out of heaven. God is a God who wants to get you in heaven. And all you have to do is believe it and call on the name of the Lord. It is the easiest thing in this world to be saved. 100% of people should respond, I am assured that I am going to be saved if Jesus came. Do not cry, my friends, if you have a loved one who passes. Do not worry if you have cancer. Do not worry if we see separation and death because we have a hope that one day we will be reunited. Do you believe that? So this whole month we talked about the compassion of Christ, the compassion campaign. And I want you, in my last sermon here, in this campaign with Pastor Jeff, we're going to challenge you to repent. Wake up. Jesus is coming soon. Change your mind about who God is. And take your place among that royal priesthood and do your part. Don't be afraid. Don't be fearful of the night. Don't be fearful about what you think you can and can't do. God will empower you. He will give you the gifts. Today, we're going to hear some amazing writers, poets. God gave these people the gift to express. 
Let's use that to bring people to repentance and bring people to think about differently who God is and let's bring salvation to the world and let's go home. What do you think? Are you ready for Jesus to come? Amen. Are you ready to stand when he comes? Amen. If you are ready, I want to invite you all to just stand at this moment and we're going to sing our last song here, Redeemed. So I'm going to ask my, my, my organist to come up here. Where, who's my song leader? Who's my song leader here? Okay, my song leader, come on up here. Now, when we sing the song Redeemed, I don't want to hear the song, like you singing like this. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Do you believe you're redeemed? Amen. Then sing Redeemed. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Because in the proclamation of your voice in this song, you're going to be telling God right now in the presence of God that you believe in Jesus and that you're ready to be saved. You ready for that? Amen. Okay, this is our declaration as a group. Let's sing Redeemed and sing it nice and loud. gracious unto thee, and may the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give you all peace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.